Hey guys, Tony, KD8RTT. Today's video is going to be on the Radio Shack HTX202 and fixing a very common error. Um, as you can see here, we have one, and if we turn it on, you'll see a blinking ER1 error. Uh, now, this is very common. If you do a little research on it, you'll find it's very common, and uh, it's basically an issue with the internal memory. Um, the internal memory for the memory channels. So what happens is, is there's actually a coin cell battery inside this radio, not the battery pack, which we'll take off now, but uh, there's a coin cell battery in here that supplies power to the memories to keep them. And eventually that battery runs out. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and change that out. Now inside, um, it's a, the battery's actually surface mount. It's actually a surface mount battery cell. Um, so we're gonna replace that with this little battery holder, this little service mount holder, and then just use a regular um, CR2032 cell here. Um, three volt, these are pretty common, but we'll just replace that. And um, yeah, so it should be a pretty simple job. You know, I'm not the first person to figure this out. I've done some research on it to find out, but I thought I'd do a video. This is actually my um, old college's radio that I told them I'd fix and send back. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'll put a link in the description to um, the part number for this, I bought that from DigiKey, and um, so we'll undo that. So, first thing we're gonna have to do is go to the back of the radio. Now, there's supposed to be a belt clip on here, and there's supposed to be um, the, the multiple screws here. There should be, actually, I believe, five screws. I think there should be one here, but as you can see, there's a couple missing, and the belt clip's missing. Now, this radio, you know, is older. I, I don't know exactly what happened. Maybe someone's replaced the battery before. I have no idea. But we're gonna take off this back panel um, and then we're going to need to take off some of the mounting hardware in here. So uh, we'll first, first go ahead and actually um, move these four screws. Let's see if I can get that in focus. Um, those four screws and then the uh, two in the middle. Actually, I take that back. Just the four outer screws. So let's get those taken out. Okay, we take that off, this bracket should come off too. So let's put that stuff to the side so I don't lose it, and then we'll keep going. Okay, we we'll also need to take out this little bracket um, piece. Um, again, be careful so you don't lose it. Um, some of this is pretty easy to, to misplace. Okay, so now we're gonna take off those, those you know, there's supposed to be five screws on the back here. Um, mine only has two, so we're gonna kind of take those off. Okay, so now we can remove the back the cover from the radio. This should come off pretty easily. To kind of slide the bottom piece out. And there's this ribbon cable. So be careful not to break that ribbon. Um, <clears throat> and here we are. Okay, so here you can see the inside of the radio and here is the battery. That is what we're gonna be removing. As you can see, one side is soldered down to the shield, that's the negative side, and of course, this other wire is the positive side. So we're gonna replace that with this. Um, so we're gonna have to cut, first we're gonna have to cut the red wire and uh, take the battery out and then unsolder that side to take that battery out. And then we're gonna use some electrical tape um, to insulate uh, the battery holder kind of from the shield. So we can solder the one tab to the negative side and the other one we're gonna uh, attach the wire to. So I'll go ahead and get that done.
Okay, so more or less connected now. I didn't know that there'd be a little piece of foam sticky tape um, under the old battery. Um, so that will, yeah, I mean, doesn't really make a difference, but um, probably could do a better job of holding this down. I could probably use some more double-sided foam tape to secure the batteries so we're not just depending on the solder joint. Um, but, I mean, it seems pretty secure. I think it'll be fine. Um, and yeah, so again, you solder the positive red wire to the positive side, the negative one to the negative. That's pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, yeah, the next step is just to install a new battery, which we have here. Okay. And then put it back together, which I'll screw everything back together. Okay, so here we are, it's all back together. Got the battery back on here. We'll go ahead and turn it on and you'll see that the air is still flashing. So we actually need to reset the processor. To do that, you're gonna press the function key. So that'd be the F key above and um, D while it powers on. So we do this with one hand. Okay, so now let's turn it off, turn it on. All right, let's just watch on this right again. There we go. Um, and you notice, doesn't complain. So we fixed it. So that's really it. I mean, you could do a little better job on the inside. It's kind of a quick and easy fix for me. Um, but um, yeah, it's that easy to fix. Um, so again, I'll link down below to the um, parts I use, which is nothing special. And some basic tools, I had some wire cutters, uh, other, uh, let's see all this screwdriver, um, soldering iron, of course, and solder. So, not not too complex. So, all right. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll uh, see you next time. Seventy three.